So I welcome all of you to this class of artificial intelligence. Currently we are discussing fuzzy logic and trying to discuss inferencing. And in that process, in the last lectures, we were discussing about fuzzy hedges. Regarding this, what we have stated so far is that if a fuzzy set A is given is represented by fuzzy membership function mu A, if it is known, then we can or do some operations for modifying the meanings. This is what we studied in the last lecture. So in this, we have seen that if mu a is given, this one, then mu very a will be equal to con a, where con a stands for concentration, this process which we have seen earlier. Similarly, mu more or less a is equal to dil a, where dil is dilation, this one. Similarly, we can define, we can modify this a using other adjectives very very a this is going to be double very so we can we already have con a and this con a will be further concentrated so we will have one more operation of con on the same lines not very a can be represented as 1 minus con a. When we write con a like this, then we mean that we are going to operate in the sense of membership functions like this. Then one more we can see more a means if we are talking about a fuzzy set A which is about old persons then this will be like older persons so more A is going to be A to the power 1.25 and mu less A we can represent using this expression. Now question comes that why 1.25? So answer is that for very A we are assuming that this is a square. This con is going to represent very. So more I am considering that this more is not that much concentration is of less intensity as compared to very so power will not be 2 as it is here rather less than that similarly we have seen that uh, this dilation is having this power half where we were having more or less then this less is going to be somewhat between dilation and normal set between somewhere between this area so we are going to use this so now this power depends on perception so this is one power which has been suggested exponent but person to person this may vary now to do something useful with the help of the theory discussed so far we will now look at a term which is from Aristotelian uh, logic 
So the logic which I am referring here is known as modus ponens. So this modus ponens was suggested by Aristotle for last uh, two thousand years. Uh, whatever has been done in the area of logic has been done with this modus ponens and we were not having for last 2000 years this ai or ann or any other tool like this we were having only modus ponens and that has been very much useful in the logic and very important in the area of logic and the same has been applied in different applications so we will see that what is modus ponens so modus ponens is very simple it says that if we have a rule it says that if a is true then b is true this rule is given and one observation is there with us and as per this observation we find that a is true now comes the role of modus ponens so if these two things are given this rule is with us and this is this observation is with us then as per modus ponens we will give this conclusion that b is true for example we can say that if we give a rule this rule that if the students study then they will succeed now we we observed that students studied this is our observation not taking these two means this uh, rule and this observation the conclusion can be given now that a student will succeed there is another rule which is known as modus tollens and according to this rule at uh, this uh, law so modus tollens says that if a rule is given a rule is of the similar form if a is true then b is true but in this case in case of modus tollens uh, modus tollens says that observation is that b is 
false then as per the modus tollens the conclusion will be will be that is false in other words we will say that this rule is given the same rule this one this rule is given and an observation is given here that the rule is same as above the observation is that students failed so the conclusion will be that students did not study now if we take the case of fuzzy sets and fuzzy informations then if our observation is that instead of a it is very a which is true very a is true then can we tell anything about b so point is that this rule is talking about a is not talking about very a so as per this rule if any information observation about a is given then only we can discuss i mean conclude anything about b but if any observation is given about very a then we cannot conclude anything about b uh when i say that we cannot conclude so human beings can probably conclude but as far as computer is concerned for computer it will be seeking for information in a very a is different so for computer it will be difficult it won't be able to tell anything uh, won't be able to conclude anything about b based on the observation given about very a here comes the fuzzy logic which is able to capture this information even if rules are given in this form and there comes the role of edges and all that or different uh, members of functions now if we take an example that if a person is old this rule is given to us that if a person is old then he feels happy now the information given us is uh, like uh, linguistic variable and that says that a person is very old then what will be the conclusion so here the conclusion cannot be made by a computer so i can say that computer cannot make a make any conclusion here why we can make a conclusion but why not computer because computer is not able to process linguistic variables which we as a human being can process computers can take help of some other mechanism to deal with this and that is what we are going to discuss but computer as such with the existing methodologies cannot give 
process linguistic variables and hence cannot process this type of information and hence cannot give any conclusion. Now we will talk about function approximation. All of you might be knowing that ANNs are used for function approximations. Do you know that uh, fuzzy logic is also used for function approximation? It doesn't appear to be that apparent, but yes, fuzzy logic also does function approximation. In fact, AI in general, AI tools in general do function approximation. So AI is function approximation, we can say. So how an ANN does approximation, function approximation? So uh, we know that ANN can be treated as a black box which takes some inputs and it tries to match with some output. We train the neural network in such a way that for a given x1 it it gives the desired y1 for given x2 it gives some value of y2 and for given x3 it gives y3 here and we can get an approximation so question is that how the fuzzy logic is doing function approximation so answer is that in case of fuzzy logic, the inputs here are going to be fuzzy membership functions like this. Then we may have some fuzzy membership functions like this. Other membership functions may be like this. So in this way we have fuzzy membership functions and this is for inputs and then we may have membership functions for output also. This is in approximate sense is shown here. So suppose here it is x1, x2, x3. All these variables are now this is x4, x5, x6. Here they are discrete the scalar values and corresponding y's are the scalar values. But here this x1 may be this membership function. This membership function is for x1. Then for x2, we may have this membership function. Similarly, different variables have different membership functions. x4 may be like this and so on. And similarly, outputs are also having membership functions. This is suppose y1, y2, y3 y4 and y5 and we need a mechanism fuzzy logic suggests a mechanism through which for such description in form of membership function we are able to get approximation corresponding to x1 y1 somewhere here for x2 
somewhere here for x3 somewhere here for x4 and somewhere here and for x5 like this and we may get a function approximation like this so now the inference mechanism which does this we will see through examples and first of all we will see the theory that how this is done this function approximation is done through these uh, rules and inference inference engines and inference mechanisms now one thing can be mentioned here that if we go from a scalar version which is here to this function version here the variables are given in the form of function numbers and functions then we get better representation of the informations and better function approximation then question comes that how these functions are going to give these outputs here and here comes the fuzzy logic and its role and that is through these kinds of rules which are given and those may be many so relating these x x1 x2s and y1 y2s so those rules are like this rules if x1 then y1 second rule will be maybe like if x2 then y2 we will take up one example and then understand this in this way we may have many rules if x6 here it is x6 then uh, y6 so through this set of rules these are set of rules so this set of rules are going to map these inputs to these outputs and give the function approximation so here this rule if we take then corresponding to x1 and y1 you get a point here according to second rule this x2 is here y2 is here and you get a point in this way this function approximation is done and when we use this function approximation then we use fuzzy logic then we don't do this apparently you will won't find that this is taking place what will be having is that we will be having this set of rules and these uh, membership functions corresponding to inputs and membership functions corresponding to outputs and then using the fuzzy logic algorithm we will be able to get outputs and then question comes that how to get these rules so as far as getting rules is concerned we get data about x and we get data about y is and from those data using the help we taking the help of clustering techniques and all that we extract these rules either through those data or through experts who are, who are working in this particular area they suggest the rules so those will be clear with the help of examples so how do we apply this whole technique so for that we will see that we have some inputs we are representing the form of block diagram but we will come to this uh, with the help of an example and see that how it works but here it can be shown schematically that inputs are given in this form in the form of membership functions and there are many inputs and we are getting different membership functions for different inputs 
this pro step is maybe called as coding where we take inputs in discrete means values measurements and convert in the fuzzy form using the membership functions so this step is known as fuzzification so when we took an example of temperature and we represented minus 3 degrees that we represented in the form of a vector because we were having different membership functions for different um terms like very cold and cold cool warm and hot so here its membership value grade was 0.75 0.25 was in cold then 0 0 and 0 so an input here which is this was converted in the form of this vector through this block diagram through this coding so this is this we get uh, this we get through coding or you can say fuzzification so here minus 3 degrees has been encoded in the form of a vector hence we can call we call this step as coding or you can say that this is a single number and you are taking the help of fuzzy membership functions and then you are getting this vector hence you call it fuzzy vector and this conversion of a given measurement of a given measurement into this vector form means that instead of one data we need to process these uh, this vector so this shows that if you have uh, many members if functions uh, instead of less number if we want to have high accuracy in our calculations then we may have more uh, these fuzzy uh, members if functions or more fuzzy terms then we will be having more Uh, vectors or large vectors and then further processing will demand high computation resources and computation time and this was the reason behind not uh, behind uh, this fuzzy logic not taking up uh, its own place in the application so it took long time before it could be put in practical applications when the computational resources and computational speed um, was improved so that these kind of vectors and a lot many rules can be processed so then comes the rule base collection of rules we call it rule base where we have all the rules which we have got so this will be rule 1 rule 2 and rule n and this uh number n need not be equal to the fuzzy uh membership functions given here why because one rule may say that if if x1 then y1 and second rule may say if x1 and x2 and x3 then y3 and so on so we may have many many rules if x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 then y6 and so on so this means that we may have we will have collection of rules 
to process these vectors which we are getting here and then we will get our output. This process is called inference. which we were referring earlier and then comes the last block which is going to decode now uh, here we were processing in fuzzy domain this rule base is processing fuzzy domain it takes fuzzy inputs and gives fuzzy output but as we did here we were taking some discrete values and then we were fuzzifying so that we can use this fuzzy system and now this fuzzy system is going to give output in fuzzy form but uh, finally we want a s output which is a uh, value discrete like this so here we need to decode and that is why this is called as defuzzification so fuzzy uh, outputs are given here with the help of rules, fuzzy rules and then this block simply is going to decode those fuzzy into some discrete single scalar values and actually here we have many fuzzy functions and the rule base gives us output something like this in the form of area and this is the answer as far as answer in fuzzy domain is concerned but we need a number so although here an area is given there are me methods mechanisms which we call or defuzzification techniques through which we get a single number suppose 12 point three or whatever would depends upon the problem domain which we are talking but we get fuzzy form of output and then we have techniques like in some cases centroid of this area is calculated and that area is suppose here this uh, centroid is here then corresponding value is going to be 12.6 12.3 or so. So as our computers cannot understand fuzzy in outputs, we need this block. This block. As our computers cannot process with the linguistic variables, so we have mechanism of this membership functions to have a representation for fuzzy uh, numbers in the form of a vector in the form of a number and then we use this rule and we get a fuzzy output and using this defuzzy fuzzy te fuzzification techniques we get a number which which we can understand so i will stop here and in, in the next lecture we will take an example engineering example for this whole process to understand that in, in a given problem how it works. So thank you.